This is the story of the boy who went in search of fear. Did he find it? Perhaps he did. Perhaps he didn't. There were once two brothers. The older brother was quick-witted, keen to work. But if ever their father sent him out on an errand after dark, he would never walk past the churchyard, for the sight of the graves gave him the creeps. And his younger brother didn't understand this at all. And on cold, dark winter nights, when people gathered by the fire and told each other stories, sometimes they would tell scary stories. And people would say, Oh, it gives me the creeps. The younger brother didn't understand what they meant. What are the creeps? Why does everyone else get given the creeps? But I don't. I wish I could find the creeps. And the sexton heard this. And so I can give the boy the creeps. So the sexton offered the lad a job. He said, come and live with me and my wife. I will teach you my trade, and we will start by teaching you how to ring the church bell. So for the first few days, all went well. All the boy had to do was pull on the bell rope and ring the bell in the way the sexton showed him. Then one night, the sexton woke the lad at midnight and said, I need you to go and ring the church bell tonight. And the boy climbed out of bed and got dressed. While he was doing so, the sexton ran out of the back door, climbed the steps, and threw a white sheet over his head. So by the time the boy got to the church and was ready to pull the bell rope, a figure in white was standing at the top of the steps. And the boy, seeing this strange, eerie figure standing there in white, said, Who are you? What are you doing there? But the figure didn't answer. So the boy did as he'd been told and rang the bell. And he said <coughs> a second time, Who are you? What are you doing there in the church at night? But the white figure didn't answer. So the boy rang the bell again. And then the third time he said, If you don't answer me this time, I'll throw you down the steps. So the boy rang the bell a third time. But by now he had lost patience with the figure in white. So he picked him up and threw him down the steps. And he landed at the bottom. There was a loud crash. And the boy went back to the sexton's house, went to bed and slept for the rest of the night. The sexton's wife was very worried that her husband hadn't come home. In the morning she went to the church and found him in a crumpled heap at the bottom of the steps with a broken leg. So the sexton's wife went and spoke to the boy's father and said, he'll, he'll, he'll have to go, he's broken my husband's leg. I don't know what I'm going to do. So the father went to speak to his son and said, What what, what do you think you were doing? You, you, it's your first job. All you had to do was ring the bell. And you've broken, you, you, you've broken the sexton's leg. And the boy said, But I didn't know it was him. It was a figure all dressed in white. And I, I challenged him once, and I challenged him twice, and I challenged him the third time. And the father gave his son a money bag with 50 talents in it, which was a lot of money in those days, and said, just go, just leave the village. You'll have to find your own way in the world. Don't tell anyone where you come from, and don't tell anyone who your father is. So... Carrying a blanket and some spare clothes, the boy set off 
And as he walked along the dusty road, he said to himself, I wish I could get the creeps. I don't know what the creeps are. Everyone else gets given the creeps. I never get given the creeps. I want to find the creeps. And the man heard him and was curious about this and said, I can tell you where you can find the creeps. Carry on a mile or so down the road and you'll find the gallows tree. And there, hanging from the gallows tree, are seven men who are married to the rope maker's daughter. You spend the night there, you'll soon get the creeps. So the boy soon found the gallows tree, and there were seven hanged men. And the boy, it being a bit cold, lit a fire and settled down to spend the night by the fire. But it was a little bit lonely sitting there on his own, and he looked up at his seven companions and said, well, you're not good company, are you? You're not saying anything. Come down here and warm yourselves by the fire. So one by one, he, pulled, he took all seven men down from the gallows tree and sat them by the fire. But they still sat, still, saying nothing. And the few rags that they were still wearing caught fire. And the boy said, well, if you're not going to talk to me, I'll just hang you all back up again. So the boy simply hanged the seven dead men back up on the gallows tree and lay down to sleep the rest of the night out. In the morning, the man, well, the man found the boy and said, so I expect you found the creeps. The boy looked at him and said, No, I haven't got the creeps. No seven men, they weren't any good company. They wouldn't talk to me. And the man just shrugged and said, I've never met anyone like this, and carried on his way. So the boy carried on along the road, saying to himself, I wish I could find the creeps. I can't find the creeps. No one else finds me. And the carter heard him and said, Come with me, lad. Have a lift in my car and I'll see. Find you somewhere to stay. See if I can give you a helping hand. So they went into an inn where the carter was planning to spend the night. And the boy was still saying to himself, I wish I could get creeps. I can't get the creeps. And the innkeeper heard him and said, I'll help you, lad. I know a place where you can get the creeps. But the innkeeper's wife said, that's, that's not a good idea, husband. That's not a good idea. He's a nice lad. He doesn't deserve that. But the innkeeper would not be deterred and he said, the end of the village is a haunted castle. Go and talk to the king who owns the castle. Spend three nights in the castle and you'll soon get the creeps. So the boy took him at his word and he went and spoke to the king and said, The innkeeper says if I spend three nights in your castle, I'll get the creeps. And the king smiled to himself and said, Well, if you survive three nights, in the castle, you will get my daughter's hand in marriage, but no one has ever survived three nights in the castle. The boy looked at the king and said, but I'll get the creeps. The king thought, well, very probably, you can take three things into the castle with you. So the boy said, I will take a fire, for it will be cold. I will take a carpenter's bench with a knife, and I will take a lathe. So that night, the boy settled down in front of the fire. And around midnight, two enormous black cats walked out of the shadows and came up to the boy. The boy said, let me see your paws. And they held out their paws and the boy said, Oh, those nails are so long. So he trapped both the cats 
in the vice on the carpenter's bench. And then he beat them both to death and threw them into the castle moat. And no sooner had he done this than other black cats and other black dogs with eyes like saucers began to appear out of the shadows in the corner of the room. And the boy took the knife and killed those who came too close and threw them in the moat. But the others, seeing the fate of their comrades, simply slunk back into the shadows and didn't dare disturb the boy again. So in the morning the king came to see the boy and was surprised to find him refreshed from the sleep that he'd had. On the second night There was a clattering and a cluttering from the chimney. Then down the chimney came half a man, just his legs and his waist. And the boy said, well, this is no good. Where is the rest of you? And with a clattering and a clattering, a man's top half came clattering down the chimney. And the two halves joined together. And there was an ugly, scarred man who tried to take the boy's place sitting on the bench at the fire. But the boy pushed him off the bench and said, No, this is my place. I sit closest to the fire. And then there was a clattering and a clattering and a banging. And other men came down the chimney. And the bones of nine dead men and two skulls. And the men all said to the boy, would you like to join us in a game of skittles? Do you have any money? And the boy said, I have a little money, and I'll certainly join you in a game of skittles, but I don't think it's going to be a very good game if you use those skulls as balls. So he picked up the skulls and turned them in the lathe until they were perfectly Sper spherical round balls and so they all had a great time playing skittles and the boy lost a little money and then in the morning the king came and spoke to the boy and said I suspect you found the creeps and the boy said well no I, I still don't know what the creeps are but I did have a good time playing skittles with with my newfound friends. They were a bit strange, a bit ugly, and it was a bit odd playing Skittles with a skull. But, you know, it was quite fun. So the king was really lost for words at this point. The third night, the boy settled down by the fire in the castle. And there, Walking into the room were six men carrying a coffin. And the boy said, ah, that'll be my cousin. Passed away a week or so ago. So the boy went up to the coffin and tried rubbing some warmth into his dead cousin's hands and picked him up out of the coffin and sat him by the fire, trying to warm him up. After a little while, the dead man's eyes opened. The boy said, it's nice to see you, cousin. The dead man looked at the boy and said, I'm going to strangle you now. So the boy said, is that all the thanks I get for warming you up? So he picked up the dead man, placed him back in the coffin, put the lid back down, and the six men walked out of the room still carrying the coffin. So the boy sat down and warmed himself by the fire. And into the room walked an old, old man, tall and thin, with a long grey beard. He said, what are you doing here? And the boy said, I'm learning to get the creeps, but I haven't found them yet. 
And the old man said, I can show you the creek. And he led the boy down two flights of steps to the blacksmith smithy, the blacksmith's forge. And the old man said, I'm strong, you know, despite my age. I can kill many a mortal. I'll show you. And he picked up an axe, and with the axe he beat the anvil, and the anvil fell into the ground. And the boy laughed and said, I can do better than that. And the old man stepped back to watch the boy as he picked up the axe, struck it at the anvil, and the anvil simply broke in two. And the boy took the old man's beard and wedged it between the two halves of the anvil. And then he took the hand of the axe and began to beat the old man until he was black and blue. And after some time of this, the old man begged him to stop. He said, I can show you where there is gold, if only you will stop beating me. The boy was intrigued by this. The gold, on the whole, sounded better than finding the creek. So the two of them walked together down into the castle cellar. And there were three bags of gold. And the old man said, one is for the king, one is for the poor, and one is for you. And with that, the old man disappeared, and dawn began to appear over the horizon. So the boy managed to climb his way back up out of the cellar. And when morning fully came, and the king came into the castle, he said to the boy, did you find the creeps last night? And the boy said, no, there were six men carrying the coffin with my dead cousin in it. And there was an old man with a long beard and he showed me where the gold is kept and he said I can have one bag of it. And the king looked at the boy and said, you have saved the castle. You have driven away the ghost of an evil man. And as a reward for this, you will have not only the bag of gold, but my daughter's hand in marriage. So the boy who knew no fear became a prince. But it still bothered him that he couldn't get the creeps. And he still said, I wish I could get the creeps. I wish I could get the creeps. And after a while, this started to get on his wife's nerves in the way that sometimes married people do get on each other's nerves. And the wife mentioned this to her chambermaid, and her chambermaid said, I'll give your husband the creeps. So she took a bucket to the little stream that ran through the garden. And she dipped the bucket in the stream so that it was full not only of water, but also of minnows. The little fish that swim around in streams. And that night the maid went up to her master and mistress's bedroom and threw the bucket of cold water and the still swimming little minnows onto the prince, the boy who knew no fear. And he woke up with a start to find lots of little fish flapping around in the pool of water in his bed. And he said, I've got the creeps. I've got the creeps. And his wife began to laugh. So perhaps that is a happy ever after ending. <laughs> Thank you for listening.